picture the Sahara, an endless expanse of sand dunes baked by the scorching sun where only the hardiest camels tread. This harsh arid landscape seems totally inhospitable to life today. Yet it's hard to believe that one of the hottest, driest places on Earth was once a lush, green paradise. But ancient artists in Northern Africa once saw a very different Sahara. Like many artists, they painted what they saw around them. And instead of sand dunes, the scenery they recreated on rocks, starting at least 12,000 years ago, was dramatically different. They made pictures of hippos, giraffes, and other savanna species that need to live near water. There are even images of livestock like cattle and sheep. While you might see these mammals in southern or central Africa today, you'd never find them in the modern Sahara. But this rock art is everywhere. One of the notable discoveries is the rock art found in the Tassilia Niger region of southeastern Algeria, which means the artists were very familiar with the animals they were depicting. The Sahara Desert covers an area of approximately 9.2 million square kilometers, making it larger than the continental United States. To put that in perspective, the Sahara is over three times the size of India, larger than China, as big as the entire European continent, and equal to around one-third of Africa's total land area. It was a territory inhabited by many diverse populations who hunted, cultivated, and even fished in the middle of what is now just a huge 10 million square kilometer pile of sand. So what happened 12,000 years ago to make this vast desert habitable? The story would be uncovered thousands of years later, Geologists would find the first clues, not in the Sahara, but at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Archaeologists would uncover evidence of vibrant societies in what's now desert. And paleoclimatologists traced these events back to changes in Earth's movement. In the mid-1800s, a German explorer crossing the Sahara encountered the rock paintings and engravings left behind by ancient artists. He puzzled over the mismatch between the lush scenes depicted and the desert around him. Since then, Geologists have confirmed what the artists saw. Northern Africa was once much wetter, starting 15,000 to 11,000 years ago and ending 5,000 years ago. At the end of the last ice age, about 12,000 years ago, the climate warmed up quite abruptly. It even became a little warmer than today. The main difference is that at the time, humans had nothing to do with it. It was a totally natural phenomenon. In a few millennia, the glaciers melted, sea levels rose, and their temperature climbed. At first glance, nothing that concerns our desert. However, this oceanic phenomenon also profoundly modifies the system of winds in Africa. The ocean warmer evaporates much more and produces more clouds. With global warming, the air masses from the Gulf of Guinea, southwest of the Sahara, begin to carry much more moisture in the monsoons. These strong seasonal rains begin to sweep far north of Africa. The Sahara then receives regular rains that form many rivers, as well as an infinity of lakes in the low points. During episodes of heavy rain, these lakes come together in marshy regions of several hundred thousand square kilometers appear. The largest of them is formed by Lake Chad. Today, there is not much left of it, but at the time this lake could reach an area at least 200 times greater than what we know. A few millennia ago, it was a real inland sea of Africa. The reconstructions of the researchers go so far as to lend it 340,000 square kilometers and 160 meters of depth. When it received too much water, it even overflowed to the south to supply the Niger River, several hundred kilometers away. With this abundance of water, life develops rapidly. The emergence of these strong monsoons promotes the colonization of the Sahara by flora and fauna, giraffes, antelopes, but also crocodiles, hippos, turtles, fish, and birds spread across this vast territory now dotted with lakes and rivers. And where there is an abundance of plant and animal life, there is also a population of humans who follow the game and colonize this environment that has become hospitable, the Green Sahara. So this image of a landscape entirely green, it must still be nuanced a little bit. The desert is not going to instantly transform into a lush tropical forest and it will rather become a kind of immense savanna. You have to imagine endless prairies where a few scattered trees grow. And in reality, there is this episode of fertility that reaches its maximum 8,000 years ago. And it is only a parenthesis of a few millennia between two desert periods. The Sahara was empty of humans, or almost empty during the pre-period, and it also emptied out after, once the parenthesis was closed. Now we're left with one question. 
could such a dramatic shift happen again in the future? One thing is certain, the Sahara story is far from over.